tell you how that felt. Swift kick from the man can turn into a bad spell. Kick ass movies and land really tend to add well. North, Mr. Mr. North Star. North Star. Judo, 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 drop you right, right out your car. Push to the haze, Mr. Always raise the bar. He strives to be great and exceeds it by far. So sit back, relax, we getting dirty like a mud pit. Talking, kickboxer and blood fist. If we catch you dozing off, then you gotta go. What you want you know about Taekwondo? What's good, y'all? Kush Hayes here. Kick-ass movie podcast number 10. Can you believe that, guys? We are more than halfway through the season. I know the season went by so quickly, but that'll happen when you actually put them together properly, as we have. With me, as always, he's the director of Pact of Vengeance, Master Len Kabazinski. Len, what's good, man? Thank you so much, Kush. Uh, again, uh, we're going to get into one of the films that is one of my absolute favorite martial art movies of all time. Favorite. I, I, I don't even know how to express how much I love this movie, but I'll, I'll get more into that as we get into the conversation about the film. Uh, but I hope you're doing well, man. And as always, thanks for having me. Hey, man. Thanks for being a part of this, as always, dude. And that movie you're talking about is No Retreat, No Surrender, Part 2. Now, I had never seen this before. I had only seen the first oh, yeah. No Retreat, No Surrender, like maybe five or six years ago. And that was thanks to a uh, Riff Tracks uh, commentary. Yeah. Well, Makes- something about the first No Retreat, No Surrender, which always bugged me. And I'm sure people caught on to this. Uh, it, it, you know, martial art people would have caught this immediately, I feel. Is he's talking to the uh, uh, who's the the lead in that Kurt McKinney, uh, whoever the lead is, in no retreat, no surrender. One is talking to the the ghost, uh, you know, for lack of, of a better Lee. term, the, of Bruce Lee. Yes, and, and uh, Leo Fong. We we just talked, mentioned uh, in our previous podcast. We get a laugh out of this. Uh, he calls him, and this is really embarrassing uh, in terms of, of this kind of thing. Uh, mm-hmm. He calls him sensei at one part. Uh, Bruce Lee is Chinese. He he would not right. be called sensei. He would be sifu. Uh, which is Chinese Kung Fu, calling him sensei. is on, It's not an insult, but that's Japanese mm-hmm. karate and, and, and stuff like that. There, he would not be sensei. He'd be sifu. And uh, it's kind of an error. That's like that's like uh, mm-hmm. me saying, OK, you're Italian and your favorite food, you know, you're known for making tacos or whatever. You know what I mean? It, it's something it's mm-hmm. completely different kind, kind, kind of thing. I can tell you, folks, that if you go check out the only bonus episode of Kick-Ass Movie Podcast that we have, I did an interview with Keith Strandberg, who wrote and produced not only No Retreat, No Surrender 1, but The King of the Kickboxers, which was oh, yeah. our first episode, as well as this one here. And he's he's got a lot of interesting answers that I tried to cover. I'm hoping we can get him on again, but that is a TBD. From what I was told, they went out to make a brand new movie entirely. It had no Correct. intention of being a sequel to No Retreat, No Surrender. It was going to just be called Raging Force. But the distributors are like, well, we can't sell this without the name of the other projects you've already done. And he's like, what? I mean, all right, we got to get this thing sold. So that's that's how we'll do it. But it makes no sense. And it right. actually makes no sense. But if you just look at this as a movie called Raging mm-hmm. Force, dude, this movie is fucking dope. OK, Yeah. well, I think you mean Raging Thunder is, is the Raging name Thunder? of the movie they Excuse they were going to call it. Yeah, it was Raging Thunder, uh, which in foreign territories, I believe it is called Raging Thunder. Uh, in America, it was released as No Retreat, No Surrender 2. And uh, I, I got to tell you, uh, before we get into the, the, this film, mm-hmm. this brings me back to a, a good time, man. When you're young, growing up, you're going to mom and pop video stores, all that kind of stuff, or any video stores in general. I mean, hell, I mean, I, I'm in Erie, PA, which is not a humongous town, but it's a it's a city. You know what I mean? Pittsburgh's <laughs> bigger. Philadelphia's bigger, obviously. There's a few places bigger, but it's a city. So we had sure. blockbusters and things. And I'm going to rent No Retreat, No Surrender 2, but they only have one copy. In those things, it was 24-hour rentals back then and stuff. I'm thinking, man, I just got to Blockbuster at 7 o'clock. Uh, it's probably due back within two or three hours here. I should just maybe hang out. There's a mall next door. I really want to see this movie. <laughs> they only got one copy. And that's the kind of movie I'll wait around for hours for to rent the one fucking copy Blockbuster got in of that movie. <laughs> and uh, it is no retreat, no surrender to. Did you succeed? Did you get the copy that night? I did. I certainly did. Yeah, I certainly did. I've only done that for two movies. 
that okay. wait around for like a copy. And they're not too far removed from each other time-wise. Uh, one was No Retreat, no, no Surrender 2, where I waited mm -hmm. around. I hung out at the mall. I came back. I was real nervous that I'd be at the mall too long and not make it back to get the copy or somebody else grab it. And I was real nervous, you know what I mean? Right. So no, nobody's coming for rain. Everybody's coming for rain, man, but somebody might snag my coffee if no retreat, no surrender to or You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but the mm -hmm. only other movie that I, uh, I, I did that for was Dolph Lundgren's The Punisher. Uh, so, oh, God. Where I, would, where I would wait around. I waited around and they actually gave me the cardboard cutout of the Dolph Lundgren Punisher uh, stand that was inside Blockbuster Video at the time. And they're like, hey, oh, do you God. want this? I'm like, Fuck yes, I want that. So, you know. That's fascinating that Blockbuster would even be renting that out. Um, yeah. 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 Right. And the, and the Dolph Lundgren's The Punisher was a hard movie to get, by the way. Like if, if your VC, if your video store had a copy, it was probably already rented out. But most video stores are like, I, I don't want this, this Australian piece of shit that happens to have Dolph Lundgren and Louis Gossett Jr. in it. So we, right. we, we won't movie. buy a copy. My comic book store was actually selling bootleg copies for 10 bucks. Oh, I have one, yeah. <laughs> uh, cheap got the Japanese laser disc one, yeah. Oh, far out. Yeah, that's nice. I like the poster for the Japanese uh, hunter. Anyways, let's no retreat, no surrender part two. This was a movie that had a hard time finding distribution. It, 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 yeah, got distributed in Germany very quickly. That would be the first territory to pick it up, but it would be a whole two years before the United States would finally see it. And that's with the new title slapped on it and all that. One trivia note I have from IMDb, always IMDb. So always take it with a grain of salt, but for whatever reason, they could not use prop guns in this movie. So from what I'm hearing, every gun and every bullet fired in this thing is real. And I don't know how much to believe of that. Cause there are some dudes taking gut shots, but then there are scenes where like our hero, Lauren Avedon is, he escapes the police at the airport and there's like 15 guys with machine guns surrounding him and they never fire a single shot. And, be, and it makes sense though, because they had actually live ammo. <laughs> that, that would make sense that they don't fire at him there then. So I would challenge that they probably, you know, don't have any ammo ammunition in their gun to begin with. If they're just running around and stuff like that to film the fingers scene, crossed. fingers crossed. Yeah. But, uh, but those kinds of weapons also have safeties on them. Uh, there, there's very minimal weapons that are out there, live weapons, replicas, all that kind of stuff. I mean, a true replica is like I had them on uh, the set of Pact of Vengeance. The one replica I have that does not have a safety is a Glock 9 millimeter. So, you know, you don't have a safety. You pull it, you use it kind of thing. But a lot of other things have safeties. Uzis, all, all those guns, they all have safeties on them. So my, my guess is their safeties were on. Their clips obviously were empty. Nothing was in the chamber and they ran around and saw Lauren Avedon go away and they didn't fire. So that would make sense, I guess. Yeah. I'm going to have some questions going into this, but overall, I, uh, overall, I, I really answer. enjoyed this. I love now, it. I had to find a copy of this on YouTube, uh, unofficial YouTube, and it doesn't have subtitles for when the Vietnamese or the Cambodians or the Thai are speaking their native language. Um, I found that to be really bizarre. Do you remember that being a thing in any copy you have or have seen? I, I do not remember that. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think this is where we need someone to step in like a vinegar syndrome, code red, wh whoever, blue underground. Somebody step in and give this movie a proper release because we know there's a 35 millimeter print of this movie out there. This was obviously uh, it, it's a it's a low budget movie. Yes. Uh, but I bet this is a million dollar budget, low budget movie kind of thing. Uh, you could get a print somewhere that you could easily scan in 2K or 4K and put out a great uh, Blu-ray copy of this. Uh, with so many movies that are coming out lately, I just bought Dead Heat in 4K. I just got Alligator yesterday in the mail in 4K. Uh, okay. Come on, people. Somebody get you know, somebody get No Retreat, No Surrender 2 and put it out there in 4K because uh, we need it. It's a good looking movie, dude. It's, it's yeah. in some fascinating locations. And there's like big budget explosions happening in this thing. Right. Man. Like this, this doesn't feel like a, a little straight to video film. Like they, I know they got the budget increased. Um, but yeah, they're, they're doing all sorts of shit in this that, that sh should be a, received better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I Yes. And, and, you know, Kush, with that kind of stuff, you got to think of production wise in, in Strasbourg could, could expand on this, I'm sure. Uh, when you go, uh, you know, people like Roger Corman would go to the Philippines and do all these post-apocalyptic movies. It's not an accident. Why? 
is because if he took, you know, $700,000 to the Philippines, that was essentially ex turning your movie into a four or five million minimum dollar budget in the Philippines. So your money got stretched a lot farther. And I'm not so sure it wasn't the same over there if they really filmed in Thailand or where they filmed. But uh, if so, you, you take over 500,000, even a million, and you just, you, you, you got five times the value of that for shooting over there. And yeah, you're blowing up shit all the time. In America, that would have cost you at minimum two or $3,000 a pot for an explosion to get a power technician out there with it. You know, obviously they're licensed professionals, all that shit has to be done. Uh, you know, you go over in Thailand, I'm not saying maybe they don't have a license or whatever, <laughs> just blowing <laughs> shit up, you know, <laughs> and you don't ask questions. You're just getting your movie done at that point. And I can't say I wouldn't have done the same thing. But, uh, you know, I bet they stretched their dollar much, much further filming where they did than they would have at America, for sure. I got to say, they, they probably acquired a quote unquote temporary permit for the day. Sure. Um, now, this movie Whatever comes out before King of the Kickboxers, but I had the hardest yes. time watching this. And while it's a sequel to nothing, I went like, this really feels like a sequel to King of the Kickboxers. It's, it's still Lauren mm -hmm. Avedon. Again, different character altogether. But oh, wow. um, yeah. Corey Yuen is the director, and I think yeah. most folks would know him best as the guy who directed The Transporter, despite the fact yeah. that he did the first No Retreat, No Surrender, and I want to say he did King of the Kickboxers as well. Um, his he biggest thing... Lucas oh. I, I do not believe he did King of the Kickboxers. Well, we'll just scratch that from the record here. But yeah, his biggest... <laughs> I gotta look good, baby. I gotta look good. I, I believe uh, it's Lucas Lowe, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Corey, the uh, biggest thing he's done was Luke Besson's King of the Kickboxers with Jason Statham. You have any opinions on that? Do you think it was a good movie? Do you forget that he actually did that and it's not a full on Luke Besson directorial? You're talking about the transporter? Yes, sir. Yeah, I like the transporter. I don't think it's bad. I wish Jason Statham would have went in that direction more uh, mm -hmm. in terms of because I, I think I think the transporter is, I mean, a martial art movie. I mean, mm -hmm. when you break it down, I would sure. say it's a martial art movie. I liked it. And it's just, you know, it feels like as we got past the transporter, the martial art film just kind of disappeared uh, kind of thing. And not too much, you know, right around that time, really, that the transporter would have come out. Uh, I like it. I don't love it like I love King of the Kickboxers or something. It doesn't have the charm of those movies. And mm -hmm. it doesn't have the wacky athleticism and in, in fight scenes that are in those films, in my opinion. I mean, in, in No Retreat, No Surrender 2 here, we have a piece of choreography where Lauren Avedon's running down a hallway and jumps off a doorknob and then roundhouse kicks some dude off of a doorknob that he jumped on. I mean, off a doorknob? Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was yeah. It's crazy. The, the fight scenes they're flipping off of walls in the one scene where they're they're kidnapping Lauren Avedon's girlfriend. Uh, I guess at the beginning here of No Retreat, No Surrender Two, and uh, yeah, he's all kinds of crazy flipping and jumping off, posting off of doorknobs, kicking people off of it, all kinds of crazy stuff. Well, let's get into the plot here. So again, this is a sequel to nothing. It it was an original story. The fact that it has a number two behind it is uh, just just for marketing purposes. But right. Lauren Avedon plays Scott Wilde, and he comes to Thailand to meet his girlfriend, and he is going to propose to her, but he needs, needs her father's blessing first. And for whatever reason, he decides to find his friend Mac, played by Max Thayer, who, uh, by the way, the guy is Mac. fucking dope. Um, he's, yeah, he's awesome. in another movie I've seen, again, via Rift Tracks called Planet of Dinosaurs. Are you familiar with that one, Lauren? I am not, but what I am familiar with him in is Martial Law 2 uh, with oh, Cynthia dude. Rothrock and Jeff Wincott and Max Thayer is also in that film. Okay, sure, man. Well, we get Cynthia Rothrock as well in this. They, they seem to be a very good team together. In fact, they have the best scene together at the end of the movie. We'll get to that in a little bit. But Scott goes to find his friend Mac, ends up actually meeting Cynthia Rothrock and she's training in a kickboxing right. class or, or wherever, right. whatever gym she's in. And uh, we, we get to see some of Lauren Avedon's skills, but he says he's a Taekwondo guy. Um, any thoughts on this? Just real quickly. Oh yeah. He's totally a Taekwondo guy. He's a Taekwondo guy in real life. <laughs> and, and when you watch his fight scenes, uh, the choreographer here uh, clearly knew what Lauren was good at. 
and that's throw mm-hmm. tons and tons and tons of kicks <laughs> and uses athleticism. And he's a, he's a light guy. He couldn't have been more than 160 pounds in this movie. Uh, so he can do a lot of crazy things, you know? So, but, oh yeah, he's totally Taekwondo. And uh, I follow him on Facebook and stuff. And uh, my favorite Lauren Avedon story for me personally was uh, I've got, I collect movie posters for those that don't know, like legit, like 27 by 41, you know, release posters, whether it's straight to video stores or the outro, it doesn't matter. Uh, and I've got the King of Kickboxers poster and I had messaged Lauren one time and I said, Hey, Lauren, uh, yeah, you know, if I sent this out to you, if I mailed this, would you, would you sign it for me? Billy signed it. And uh, I'd love it if you signed it. And I, I sent him 20 bucks and mailed it out to him and stuff like that. And so uh, nice. it, my, po- my poster comes back two weeks later and, and it signed, you know, the King, uh, Lauren Avedon and stuff. <laughs> and my twenty dollars was still in it. And he, he didn't take my money and just sign my poster and send it back to me. So uh, cool guy. I mean, totally. I can tell. You know, he, he's a real dude, a real martial art guy. So uh, yes, ta- Taekwondo makes total sense uh, for Lauren Abaddon. Dig it. All three of our American characters here come off. Well, they come off like obnoxious Americans in a foreign country. However, mm. Lauren Abaddon actually. Compared to King of the Kickboxers, he's actually got a much cooler persona, or at least a, 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 I like the guy a lot better in this than I did in King of the Kickboxers. Where he, he comes off more like Kevin Nash in that, and I love Kevin Nash, but he <laughs> Kevin Nash is too cool for that situation. Whereas this is like, there's times where he's a smart ass, but then he's like, oh shit, no, I'm like look, I need to find my girlfriend, and her, her father has been kidnapped, and well, you know, like there's he, he's dealing with some real world consequences here, and. Like I, I appreciate where he was coming from in all of this is where I'm going. Yeah, I mean, to, to, to start the movie, they all come off as American dicks and stuff like that. I yeah. mean, Abaddon's going into the Mutai gym and is an ass, but immediately mm. is confident in himself, you know, where a real American's going to get his ass beat going mm, into yeah. a real Mutai gym in Thailand where, you know, those guys, they if they don't die in training, they're not training hard enough kind, kind of thing. It's like being a Russian Spetsnaz. Uh, if you're not, if you don't, if somebody doesn't die in training, they didn't do it right. And uh, <laughs> Uh, that's the, that's the way that kind of shit is down there. So Lauren Abaddon comes in as a brash douche, uh, and, and he ends up beating up little little guys that are you know a foot shorter than him and everything. But you know he still got the job done. Even Rothrock that comes up and meets him is like, eh, eh, eh. You know, she's kind of assy to him as well. But it's mm-hmm. a, it's like, oh, we've got three Americans in this movie. <laughs> there we go. Not only is he an ass though, but like he, he does a thing where like, well, this guy doesn't understand English, so I can totally insult his mother, which of course gets the reaction of a punch to the face, which then invites a actual sparring session in the gym. Lauren Avedon actually outclasses him. But then once his opponent's on the ground, like he actually helps him up. And I was like, I- I'm getting so many confusing tones out of this, but at least I, I appreciate that mm. as well. Uh, I've done that before in competition, though. I've knocked people over and then I help them up, even in mid-match. I mean, I'm not a Dick. Did you I mean, insult I, his I, mother though going into it? I, no, I did not. I just said, "Hey, there you man, go. I, 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 I gave him my hand and I helped him up like mid match." <laughs> that, <laughs> good, good sport. That's that's yeah. That's I, I, I sport. like that camaraderie. I'm not out to. It's not blood sport in 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 black belt <laughs> competition. Everybody wants to win, but I mean, at the same time, I'm still going to kick and punch your face in. But if you fall over, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll help you up. <laughs> For sure, <laughs> as, as should be done. As should be done. So. Lauren is told that Mac Mac is not a, not friends at the gym and go go somewhere else. He ends up just going to a hotel, which turns out to be just looks like a brothel. You know, I could yeah. be wrong about that, but there's definitely a pimp in there trying to sell yeah. him. No offense, Thailand is some of the ugliest women I have ever seen on camera. Yeah, uh, they love you a long time. I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. And then uh, he calls a sweetheart up. And they're like, yeah, let's meet for dinner. They go out for dinner. She ends up coming back to the brothel. And she's like, what the fuck is this place? Like, His girlfriend yeah. actually comes from money. Thai money, American money. She's, she's got money. And at no point she's well, like, first off, fuck this place. You can stay at my spot. Or because my dad is traditional, I'm going to find you a better hotel since this is my country. <laughs> I have done that before. <laughs> it seems like in a past life now, but I've said, you know, we have arrived at a hotel or whatever. And I'm like, we're not doing this. I, I can't yeah. have you stay here. And we <laughs> left and just drove. Yeah, off as you should. The extra uh, two hours or whatever. I'm like, I can't do this to you. I'm not, I'm, yeah. I'm not doing this. If it was just me, maybe I'd crash here, but I, I can't do this to you. So we're, we're out of here. So, you know, I've been there before and it's a, uh, 
You know, we should go back to their dinner, though, that she takes them to. Oh, the dinner is hilarious. Because eating stuff that would, you know, Kush, I can do blood and guts and stuff in movies and all that stuff all day long, you know. But what I can't do is gross food. I can't do it. <laughs> and I know that that's I have the beholder type stuff, but gross yeah. food, I can feel the throw up sit in my throat uh, when she's going to give him tiger balls and all, all the other stuff monkey brains that, that, that were on there he's like i love bean curd or whatever he's like scott that's monkey brains and i thought this is just fucking gross man i honestly thought she was fucking with him on that one point but i was just like yeah the the, the quote-unquote monkey brains looks delicious the tiger balls all right i think that's probably the only edible thing here but like yeah at one point he like picks up some squid he's like i can't fuck with that you know he there she's like yeah here have some cockroaches and some cicadas it's like bitch get the fuck no 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 yeah. like i don't want mcdonald's yeah, but no <laughs> i have not probably eaten mcdonald's in many many years i mean except for like their coffee uh, i inherited that from my mother who always said mcdonald's had great coffee and they they do uh leo fong loved the the sausage egg sandwiches he wanted to go to mcdonald's every single day on set i'm like we, leo i can't wait in line for a half hour <laughs> I, I, I really like some sausage muffins then and i thought fuck i gotta get them yeah, yeah. <laughs> and can i get you a bagel leo no i love the sausage <laughs> at mcdonald's but you know what i i haven't eaten mcdonald's food and probably forever because i couldn't even tell you the last time many 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 years ago I would eat the nastiest shit at mcdonald's before i would eat monkey brains or tiger balls let me tell you that I think if they presented me with some monkey brains, I would have to try them. Honestly, Ugh. I'd be like, mm. right, you know, what? like just one bite. If it's not good, it's not good. And we won't eat a second bite. But like, yeah, I would, Ugh. I would try that. I would try some of that Ugh. dog that uh, the Russians were cooking up as well. Um, that didn't look good, but I was like, well, I would at least try it. It's a little stringy, but whatever. Um, oh, screw that, yeah. man. I, it reminds me of my uh, Dan Severin, uh, UFC Hall of Famer, who I worked with many years ago on Swamp Zombies. Uh, Dan Severin said, oh, I was going out with these businessmen and they're in like Thailand or Japan or where, wherever he is over there. And uh, he's like, yeah, they brought out this plate of just, just, just this just fish on a plate kind of thing. And, I, you know, they just grab it and bite it. So I'm like, Dan, you didn't do that, did you? Do? Oh, yeah, man, I did. I just grabbed the fish. <laughs> and I thought, oh, oh. oh. Now I, I do have an allergy to seafood and shellfish yeah. and anything that breathes underwater. I I can't yeah. do it. I, I literally no. throat closes up, then I die. That's that's a thing. So when I many yeah, when, years ago, to be polite, I might have been eaten like breaded shrimp or something like that to try to be polite to like a girlfriend's parents or something like that. But I don't do seafood at all, dude. I think it's all gross. They all look like bugs to me, and I'm not a <laughs> bug person at all. I don't I don't like bugs, uh, ladybugs. I can I can do that. Uh, I can't do centipedes, cockroaches, and it was just bugs and, and seafood to me, except for fish. They all look like crabs, lobsters. That <laughs> all looks like fucking bugs to me, man. Have you actually eaten ladybugs? No, hell no. They're cute. Oh. They're just little. Oh, cute oh little gotcha. Things. All right. I clearly I misunderstood. Do, I, no. Well, well, who's going to put chocolate on a ladybug and eat it? When have, when have you ever heard of somebody that eats chocolate covered ladybugs? No. it's. I didn't know anyone was eating cicadas. <laughs> Right. They, well, that happened. When in Thailand, I guess that's that's what you do. I guess so. Enjoy so, anyways, they uh, the bitch gets kidnapped. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, they're 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 having a, a a little smooch session, and two dudes kick in the door, and they they kidnap uh, Lauren Avedon's girlfriend. As that's Adam. happening, though, her her family's house is being invaded. And people definitely got murdered. It's un I, it's unclear to me what happened to the father. At one point, yeah. uh, our, our guy Matthias Humes was like, "Your father left for America," and I think he's fucking with her. But I also like again because there's no subtitles for any of the Asian actors. Yeah. That I, I don't know what happened. Well, the father answers the phone at, at one point, and it's one of my favorite, like, funny moments. Unintentionally mm. funny, but it's great because he can't speak English very well. But I think he tried there. I was like, "Hello." Hello? Mm -hmm. Damn it! <laughs> I thought, that's hysterical. Dude. Okay. Thought, okay. That's a funny ass moment there. And, uh, I yeah. remember that scene, but there was nothing to indicate that that like, could have been the, the butler, could have been her uncle. Like, there was nothing to tell me that that was her father answering the phone. I mean, I should have put two and two yeah. together, but still. He looked but like still. he was in some kind of military outfit or something, though, from what I recall, but uh, I might be wrong there. Oh, at one point, we finally meet Mac. 
and Mac is at a disco and he is engaged in maybe the coolest arm wrestling session yep. I've ever seen. Like people well, are clapping along the beat. This is definitely a thing that happens at this bar, at least if not multiple times a night, at least once a night. Um, Mac is fighting a local guy and it's not just regular arm wrestling. Like whoever loses is going to get their hand pressed on a gas grill. And I was like, that's yeah. fucking dope. Like, yeah. And I love with Lauren movie. Avedon being the douchey American he, he's being like leans on his man, Mac's shoulder and yeah. almost causes yeah. him yeah. to lose. Yeah. Mac overpowers his opponent and takes all the money. And then they, they go off to talk and it turns out that, uh, Mac now knows because of a news feed and because he speaks the native language that, oh shit, his boy Lauren Avedon is wanted for murder. Right, yes. So, yeah, uh, I love Max Thayer in this movie. He's probably my favorite character. Uh, although, Scott, I could see me wanting to like train with and stuff because I'd love to knock his block off kind of, kind of thing. Uh, but uh, yeah, Max Thayer, I really I, I like. Max seems to be into a bunch of stuff, whether it's dealing arms or whatever he's doing. Uh, uh, Mac has got his own thing going on, but, uh, but yeah, I, I think the club scene's awesome. The, the gas grill arm wrestling thing is awesome. It, it's just, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of style in this movie and in instances where you won't see it in other movies. And I think this movie has a lot, a lot of uniqueness going for it, including uh, being a sequel to nothing, uh, which <laughs> apparently in the eighties was kind of a thing because there's another uh, uh, late eighties movie that I really liked. It was a sequel to nothing. And that was curse Two: the bite, uh, which is nothing like curse one at all. But uh, apparently, you know, th this was kind of a thing. You just sequeled nothing and you, you just slapped it on there to, uh, you know, Fascinating. ride off of the first one. I know of Cursed 2. I've not seen it, but that's like, that's <sighs> why I do like they, it. Distributors, why do you keep doing that? Stop, stop, stop tagging. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Um, Mac is that 80s character where he was a Vietnam vet. And instead of coming back home to a country that didn't appreciate him, he, he stayed in country and all of a sudden just became an arms dealer or, or a pimp. Or, or whatever, whatever whatever happens with Americans out there. But in this case, he's an arms dealer. And he actually has ties to uh, Scott's girlfriend's father. He's like, oh, you were dating his daughter? Shit. Like, he's like, well, this is a whole different situation now. Like, I was just talking to that guy yesterday uh, about some stuff. They, um, they're plotting how to get her back. And then the local authorities surround Max's warehouse. I have a bittersweet emotion to this. I think it's super clever how they get out of the warehouse where they, yeah. they, they literally climb up, uh, up a bunch of cargo yeah. shelves. They get on the roof. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it's just cheap tin. So as soon as they're walking on the roof, the cops know they're there. <laughs> the <laughs> cops go out the back door. At no point do they're like, we should just go out the back door. No, they, the, the cops follow them out the back door catch up with them immediately and it's only just by deuces maxana or, or however that's pronounced that they get away yeah and, does that hold water okay true it's good uh, yeah i mean yeah they, that's exactly how they got away pretty much but again it's there's a lot of suspense in this there's a lot of tension going on like they need to be super quiet when they're at some point like he accidentally taps a box and someone hears it like what is there someone over there what no i guess i guess no one was over there okay and then they keep going on and then it's only when they get on the roof and out anyways cynthia rothrock is piloting our helicopter that's exciting oh yeah yeah well you can't you, cynthia you know was coming along in this movie i mean if you go into it knowing where she is in the credits and stuff you knew uh she was going to get involved in the action and once they leave the warehouse, it's on <laughs> kind yeah. of thing for this movie. It She's went from not getting the props. A woman in the late eighties in Thailand should be getting for being a helicopter pilot. Um, right. Well, you know, uh, her and Mac have a, have a history that we, we, we learn more and more about as the movie goes on, but he's just, He's just being very rude to her the entire time. It's not even an American thing. He's just being misogynist or, or whatever, whatever it is. Um, but at one point we meet a high ranking official of, I don't know if it's the Vietnamese army or the Viet Cong or whatever, but Mac knows some guys in Vietnam when they get there. And this, 
going just by any story I've seen, this guy should be actually the 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 leader of the Vietnamese group should be like in fact, she was like, Oh, you flew the helicopter? Why don't you come to my tent over here? I need to ask you some questions and get to know you better because that's that's <laughs> fascinating. You're you're not you're not like normal women. You're 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 better than the women I know in this village. Yeah. <laughs> But anyways, Mac gets there, the, the whole crew gets there, and at first they're surrounded, and you know, there's danger. There's there's some suspense, there's some tension, and then they're like, come follow us, and they get to this head yeah. tent, and uh, Lauren Allen awesome. was like, I thought you knew these guys, and he's like, I, I don't know that I do, but I don't know that I don't. And then he meets the guy, and they're like, oh shit, it's you. You and I, we, we warred together like 10 years ago. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and everybody's buddy, buddy, are you Until. disappointed the tank never gets ne- never gets revealed? Like there's a photograph of a tank that keeps that's been teased twice now. Yeah. We never get that tank. No, but we get a shit ton of fight scenes going forward in this movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's shortly after this, his buddy, uh, I, I guess you could say, pulls a Landau on him and he's with a bunch of monks. In a crazy ass fight scene that's gonna happen shortly. That's after my this favorite scene. scene, to be honest. Oh, uh, the choreography is amazing. They're yes. getting ropes around their necks and doing in sync cheerleader splits together as ropes mm-hmm. are coming around them. And crazy ass choreography in that scene. It, it, it's one of the, the best, if not the best, uh, fight scene choreography in the film, but it's crazy. It's amazing. I wish they didn't speed up the film. Because it's, yeah. it's very noticeable to me. But again, yeah, fantastic. That was a thing back then. I get it. That was a, that was a big thing, uh, you know, going into the Hong Kong cinema. And this has the feel of a Hong Kong cinema, except you've got three Americans in it kind of thing. But the feel of the picture, uh, in my opinion, is very Hong Kong. Uh, in back then, even even when you had Robert Klaus, who, who again, RIP, you're very missed, my friend, but uh, Robert Klaus, who would have done uh, Enter the Dragon and stuff, but he also, towards the, getting towards the end, did China O'Brien uh, with Cynthia Rothrock. That's also mm. sped up in parts, which makes it feel very weird, uh, but Robert didn't, you know, he couldn't make that disconnect from an American release martial art picture uh, from the Hong Kong cinema stuff, and yeah, you get some weird sped up things, and that other stuff doesn't seem to be as much and it, it varies, I think, in this picture. Yeah. It turns out that the monks aren't monks at all. They're actually part of the, the crew that right. kidnapped Lauren Avedon's uh, girlfriend. But they, they dressed up as monks. The real monks are being hidden away. And uh, they are not good soldiers because Max got a knife under in, in his lower back. And he cuts all those ropes immediately and fucks everybody up. Uh, it's, yeah. it's embarrassing how bad these, these not monks are get fucked up again these, these are professional soldiers but i guess they're not martial artists but with the rope thing i would have thought they would be anyway uh probably not i mean soldiers still have that's fair that's fair our heroes overcome they adapt they they get away except now they're split up so uh mac and scott end up we are led to believe for half a minute that they are blown up in a in a rice hut Meanwhile, Cynthia Rothrock is being kidnapped and she is actually being taken to the same camp that Scott's girlfriend is being held at. This is all and, nicely tying together now, but yes. Yeah. I believe we've already met Matthias Hughes at this point. This is his very first yes. movie. He, he would do an it uncredited is. scene in Dragnet prior to this. Correct. Which would also get He's released a prior to this. Okay. He's on Muscle Beach in that in that scene. He is uh, one of the Muscle Beach uh, guys working out in Dragnet. Okay. The again uh, through IMDb trivia, um, he has no experience with movies or martial arts or anything, but he's got something about him in this that I haven't seen in any of his future movies. Like in in any movie I've seen dating past this, he's stiff and he's in, indomitable. You know, like he's a force to be reckoned with. But you know, in this one, he's very dainty. Uh, he, he's very flamboyant. He, he comes off yeah. more like a dancer to me than a martial artist. Do you know anything about yeah. that? Like, was he a dancer before uh, this? I do not know that, but I do know he didn't have many, like, you didn't have much, like, martial art experiences. And, mm-hmm. and going into this film, uh, I remember uh, Harang, who did the fight choreography or, or, or was helping train people for it, uh, had said that, you know, the cupboard wasn't empty with Matthias, though. He was athletic enough that if he showed him choreography, he could mm-hmm. pick it up. 
much like you could take a ballet lesson and probably come in and do a really great martial arts scene because you know how to control your body, you know how mm. to throw kicks and things like that. Uh, so I think he, he had that going for him is that Mar Matthias Hughes back then wasn't just all muscle, which he is. He's a very muscular, tall guy. Uh, oh, but yeah. at the same time, he had the athleticism about him that he could pick up choreography quickly. And I think that impressed uh, the producer, or, you, know, you know, the choreographers and stuff on this film. So then, uh, because I believe... Uh, they wanted Jean-Claude Van Damme to play that role, I think. Oh, gotcha. And, and, th and then he said no, and then that was it. I believe Van Damme was supposed to be uh, Matthias Hughes. Uh, it, that makes his sense. His character in this. So uh, Van and Damme and uh, Kurt, Wild Kurt Wilder, the, the other gentleman from the first No Retreat, No Surrender, they were contractually obligated McKinney, to be in this. McKinney, thank you. Contractually yeah. obligated to be yeah. in this. And Van Damme was like, there's no fucking way I'm going to this part of Asia. Like there's yeah, all sorts correct. of fucking problems. Uh, yes. yeah, I'm just not and doing it. Kurt, he, you shouldn't either. That's and don't bring your I wife. Believe, yes. I believe he talked Kurt out of doing uh, no retreat and surrender too. And I think Lauren Abaddon was working at a car dealership or something like that when they did a casting call or, you know, uh, then he got recommended and he got the part and then that set up the rest of his career. I mean, he didn't come in uh, to a low budget thing with no release and no one ever saw it. I mean, he came into something that got into blockbusters at the time. He came into something, uh, you know, that's, that's piggybacking off of a theatrical release movie and no retreat, no surrender one, uh, that kind of stuff. So, uh, Lauren came into a pretty good situation right off the bat, I think. And, so in my interview with Keith Strandberg, I've asked about this, like what happened with Van Damme? Like, what, was he a good guy? Was, was he a cool dude to work with? Was he a dick? You know, and he was like, no, he was a good guy. But when it came to getting him back for No Retreat, No Surrender 2, he, he didn't want to do it. And uh, Mr. Strandberg doesn't get into the why or maybe doesn't even know the why. But he's just like, you know, you, if someone just doesn't want to do it, you can't really hold them to it. We had a contract, but like, come on we're not taking that shit to court you know it's, it's right well it's yeah penis. nobody wants to get into that for that kind of stuff but you got to remember too you got to think of the timeline now as well because we're getting awfully close to production period for blood sport when this is released in 1987 i wouldn't be surprised if something was in the behind the scenes where canon was already talking with van damme and something that that would be my guess uh, is that Cannon was already talking with Van Damme. Maybe Cannon suggested, you know, don't go do this because we're trying to produce this here where you're going to mm -hmm. be the star and do it. You know, that's my guess is Cannon was talking to him and Van Damme didn't do it because of that kind of stuff coming down the road quickly there. I think that's a pretty good educated guess, just, just to be honest. So we, we, we meet Matthias. He's a Russian general just hanging yes. out in Vietnam I guess he's waiting for some ammunition that was supposed to be brought to him by Scott's girlfriend's father, who is eventually murdered when I don't remember because I have no subtitles in this movie, but he toys with one of his victims. Like they, they have a fight. The guy gives him a good fight and he's like, Hey, you gave me such a great fight. I'm going to let you go right now. <laughs> Guys, open up the open up the barracks, <laughs> run that direction. And, and then ultimately he shoots him in the back, which is kind of shitty. But it's it's that level of danger. It's that level of stakes, you know, like, oh, man, this guy is just he just loves fucking with people. And yeah, they really made his character, in my opinion, out to be I mean, obviously not the, the fight component and stuff. Uh, uh, but he's a lot like Stephen Berkoff, uh, his character in uh, Rambo 2 uh, in oh. First Blood Part 2. You're a Russian comrade, uh, you know, that guy, the, the main uh, Russian bad guy in Rambo, who's not a physically imposing fight guy like like Matthias is but uh, mm -hmm. in this film. But he almost has the same entrance. They walk off the helicopter, they, almost the same pr presentation to both characters in, in those films. But uh, he always reminded me of him for some reason. Yeah, and, and Matthias is pretty much just all strength in this. There's no real, no real technique. He he blocks a kick. And then he just picks you up and throws you on the ground. Throws and, you. Right. You or know, he throws that's, you that's with, still or he, bad. Or he takes you and throws you in a pit of alligators. Or Everyone gets tossed in the pit of alligators. I'm glad you brought up the pit of alligators because when we cut to the pit of alligators, it goes from film to video. And it is startling to watch that shit in, in restored HD, which is what this copy was I had on YouTube, despite... Really? You found it in HD. You found this in HD. 
it's a really good cut on YouTube, man. I'll be happy to pass it on to you. But pass yeah. it on because I there's I would I would like to see that. It's it's still blurry where it's blurry, but it's like oh, someone cleaned this up. I wish they had added subtitles, but again, like it's we we get to a scene again where uh, Cynthia Rothrock has already been kidnapped. Mac and Scott actually have to like ascend a waterfall. Super exciting scene. It, it, it's yes. better than the the Point Break remake. Oh yeah, <laughs> which actually had a chase scene where people are climbing up the face of a, a mountain and dun, 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 dun. like it, it takes you forty five minutes to climb up that mountain, guys. At minimum, and you're doing it in three. Okay, anyways, um, but like the, there's scenes where they're climbing up the waterfall and it goes from film to video to film to video. It's it's really noticeable, um, and I don't have eyes for that shit. So when I'm saying that, it's, I, it's I'd really to- noticeable. I'd have to look at it and see. I'd be curious what stock footage is uh, potentially. I'd have to really look at the footage and see, are the alligators ever in the same shot with anybody? Did they They're obviously not. cut to stock of alligators? Well, there you go. The, the, the alligator stuff is shot just on video uh, somewhere, and then uh, they cut back and forth. The pitch is there. Everything's there, but the alligators are never in the shot with anybody else kind of thing. So, I mean, that makes sense. We, that, that's done in tons of th- movies where they pull stock footage like that regardless of the format the alligator pit in this movie is as good as the alligator pit in indiana jones and the temple of doom no guff yeah i, I won't debate that no, I, yeah i i get a, a more of a faces a death vibe out of it l- a little bit but i mean yeah <laughs> I, I, could, I could see that yeah so Cynthia Rothrock's been kidnapped. She meets up finally with Scott's girlfriend. And at first she's like, what are you in here for? And Cynthia's like, I don't know. Well, actually, we were here to pick up you. But then Scott, and then there's a flashback. She's like, Scott and Mac are all right. She's like, I don't know who Mac is. but Don't worry, Scott and Mac are all right. They're probably going to be here by sunset. But we get a little flashback. It's actually, they intentionally make it grainier. It's, it's a flashback. They could have just made it black and white. We didn't even need to see the flashback. But for whatever reason, like we need a flashback for 90 seconds so that Cynthia Rothrock can lie about Scott and Mac's uh, right. survival. Scott and Mac do arrive at the camp. They finally make their destination after all that bullshit. And then they come up with some MacGyver bullshit. Uh, and I'm in. I'm in. I'm all in, guy. They're, they, they're like, let's take this wire. We got this Gatling gun. I need you to take out that guy in the post there. Can you do this thing with the crossbow? Like they, they set up an elaborate set of traps that do distract the, the Vietnamese army. And then we finally, geez, I skipped over Cynthia Rothrock's fight with Matthias. Uh, that's pretty brief though. I mean, she was, uh, fighting, uh, harangue there, I believe. And then they do the Matthias thing where obviously he's doing simple blocks to all her high kicks and things like that. It's, it's nothing, you know, super crazy or whatever. uh, We went, as we're getting to the the climax, uh, moment of the the, the film here, as we get to the finale, we got some cool shit going on with Matthias and, uh, Lauren Abaddon. Before that though, you you just mentioned, uh, Cynthia Rothrock had to fight another gentleman. I, I, his name escapes me. However, again, per IMDb trivia, and again, take it with a grain of salt, Cynthia Rothrock's actually got padding for her fight with this gentleman, and he Lang. manages to hit her every part of her body that doesn't have padding because that's just how shit was <laughs> in the 80s in Asia with a woman. <laughs> that's sad. Most of that's Cynthia good. Rothrock's career is her... Most of her movies are proving that she's as good as a man, but most of her life in these movies is proving that she's as good as any of the performers that she's working with. It's it's pretty amazing. Yeah. I don't agree at all. Love Cynthia. Yeah, man. And I, I don't. I, and, and Cynthia is, is one of those uh, another rarity, I think, in especially in Hollywood that she got better looking, in my opinion, when she got older. So yes. I mean, I don't I think she's super. I mean, she's not super attractive in this movie. I mean, it's cool because she can fight and stuff like that. But you look at her now, and she's like, wow, so she's a, a, a nice looking woman in her 60s at this point. But uh, very nice looking lady now. Cynthia Rothrock in the 80s is very cute, but they, they made her have the short cut yeah. bob. And I guess that's yeah. so guys can't yank her hair, but they still can. Um, yeah, 
Anyway, she kept anyway. that for a long time, though. She kept that through several movies. China O'Brien's, Martial Laws, all, all those. Mm-hmm. She kept that blonde bob style for, for quite a number of years there. Yeah, I have to think that was a marketing thing also. Um, but yeah, she looks great with the long hair. She looks great as she gets older. She's only in better shape now. And uh, I would love to interview her and, and talk about not not just this movie, but everything else in her catalog. I, I got a lot of questions about Cynthia Rothrock. But where are we? So they, um, the girls are, are, are still in bondage. The Vietnamese are singing Russian folk songs. They're, 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 they're rotisserieing a dog. And finally, sunlight. They're, the girls are about to be fed to alligators with a very elaborate trap. They could just push them into the alligator pit, but they got this whole thing worked up with pulleys yep. and yep, ropes pulleys, and yeah. sandbags. Um, yep. As far as movies go, it's actually a fun gimmick. I thought it was However, awesome, but I thought it was more of a torturous thing than it was just, you know them being incompetent and just doing something unnecessary. I thought, Oh it was no, more it's definitely a torturous thing. It's, it's, yeah, it you know, a torture they, element, right? they, they put a bullet in the sandbag. So as, as right. sand Correct. is leaving the bag, they're lowering into the alligator pit. And that's, right. that's great. Lauren Avedon and Mac almost sleep through the entire thing. It's only because Scott wakes up and is like, Oh shit, they're, they're, they're finally going to execute my girlfriend. We gotta, we gotta execute plan alpha now. And, and they right, do, no, and so. sure enough, everybody gets distracted, and then multiple people get gunned down. We finally get a fight between Scott and Matthias. Yep. It's all right. Yeah, it's okay, but I mean, the creative stuff is going to come from Abaddon, who's obviously you know, martial arts speaking more athletic, so he's jumping off the ceilings and grabbing the American flag and putting it over his face, or whatever flag it was, and yeah, you know, doing all the... the, the the, the, the crazy stuff there uh, that he's doing in it. Uh, Matthias, be strong, push this desk around into him and try to crush him like a peanut against their an m M&M against the wall there with his desk. Uh, all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think it all works. Again, it really it, it, it is a testament to the choreography in the movie, knowing what people can do and what they can't and what their strengths and weaknesses are kind of thing. Matthias will throw a few kicks, but nothing crazy. Uh, most of his stuff is just comes from, you know, power movements, tossing Lauren around, doing blocks and stuff like that. So, uh, but I, I, I think, you know, for what it was, I, I think the fight's fine. Uh, you know, I, I think the fight with the, the fake monks is the best, uh, but uh, there's a lot of cool stuff going on in this movie. You just mentioned uh, stunts, and we've been talking about stunts the entire movie, but uh, Blackie Shaolienko, a.k.a. Ingor Sao Leung, he, he was the dude behind all the stunts in this. He's the stunt coordinator. Does that make any... Mm-hmm. No, but uh, the guy that uh, you said was kicking Rothrock and stuff, his name is Harang something. Uh, mm-hmm. H-W-A-R-N-G. I just can't think of the, the rest of his... his, his, his uh, surnames or whatever you call it so but but i believe harang is, is uh his last name uh that, that would have been kicking and punching rothrock in that scene where she had to be padded up the entire vietnamese army gets mowed down mines get set off people explode there's some violence in this movie when it comes to like grenades and landmines like i was really impressed that yeah man there's there's a lot of brutality in this that it works it all works this was a good movie this, <laughs> this the grenade the grenade spot's great the grenade, the grenade spot's, spot's great, great though. <laughs> they, yeah, they, this guy, there's a grenade there. The guy falls on it. They throw a table on top of him and run. Hmm. And then he. Explodes. What else are you going to do? <laughs> what else are you going to do? That's Shit. a great scene. Yeah. yeah, there's some great stuff in this movie. It really is. So at some point, Scott beats Matthias Hume. I want to say he throws him in the alligator pit. Just he does. Overall. Matthias dies in the alligator pit. Yeah. In the alligator pit, as he should. As he should. Yeah. At he drags some... him, but the car, he, he gets in the Jeep and he, he uh, ropes oh, him shit. and swings him. Uh, Matthias is flying That's around right. on the ground with the rope around Dude. him and he swings him into the, the alligator pit. He's doing some weekend at Bernie shit, which actually gave Matthias a, uh, a, a, a back injury. Uh, yeah. Again, per IMDb trivia. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, I mean, if you're looking at it, like someone's taken those bumps, and apparently in this case it was Matthias, who, as we've just discussed, is not Hollywood prepared. 
So he's just like, oh <laughs> shit, I'm being dragged around. Ah. Yeah. Um, everything seems to be calm and serene, and our hero has met up with his 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 woman, his lady love again. But there's one guy that they didn't kill completely, and sure enough, he has access to a weapon and he shoots it. And sure enough, Cynthia Rothrock takes the brunt of all of those bullets. And this is the I think the I haven't seen every Cynthia Rothrock movie. This is the only time I've seen her actually die in a film. And I gotta say, dude, I was like, I was upset. I was like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> like I thought Mac was gonna take it. I thought Scott might take it, but then survive at the end. Like right, yeah. he has I'm a sure full on death him. scene, spoiler alert. And it's like, oh, th- this is the best acting I've ever seen her do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's disappointing they kill off her character in the end. I'm not sure. Yes. I'd be curious why they wrote it that way kind of thing. Maybe they didn't want the three dominant Americans come in and nothing happens and they mow through everybody. But, I mean, I, I don't know why they, they put that slant on it. I think it's a mistake. Obviously, No Retreat, No Surrender 3 happens, and it has nothing to do with one or two. So <laughs> Abaddon does not even play the same character, although he's in it. Uh, he does not play the same character as he even did in part two. So, uh, you know, who knows? Overall, it, 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 this is definitely one of my favorite martial art movies. Uh, it, 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 I can't, I, it, I talk to everybody about it. They see it, see it, see it. But unfortunately, it's so hard to get a hold of. Uh, you know, you, you have to watch it on YouTube and, and and pray you get a good copy of it kind of thing, which it sounds like you did for the most part. But uh, this movie need, needs a proper treatment by somebody. I, I got lucky that it was on YouTube. I looked for it on all the usual platforms, your Tubies and your Amazon yeah, Prime. And ones. well, you can find this on Amazon, but it won't be on Prime. It'll be on, I forget if it's a Blu-ray or a DVD, but because it's out of print, it will cost you $50 to find a physical copy of No Retreat, No Surrender 2 through Amazon. I've got it on DHS, but yeah, I've got it on DHS, but that's it. Well, you know, but the girls ain't coming over to your place to see your VHS. So right, they, they want it. to see your Blu-ray player. Come on. I get it. Well, I got a 4K. I mean, I... I, I Even I'm better. A 4K, I got, I'm a 4K snob now. But, there you go, dude. <laughs> it's you know I got that 4K right? collection, baby. I do. I've got, I've got a decent 4K collection going. Outstanding. So, dude, I totally, totally was into this movie. I watched it yeah. twice. I wish it was 10 minutes tighter, just tighter. It doesn't, uh, sh- let's forget about shorter. Just, just make things tighter. I feel like we repeated things or things went a little too long. But again, this is, this is a lot of people's first movie. So yeah. for, for what it is, it's pretty fantastic, though. And I appreciate you putting it on the list this year. Yeah, I, I, but doing martial art films and stuff, it, it definitely would have been w- w- within my first few picks. Uh, I would have picked this. Uh, my number one pick is probably my favorite martial art movie of, of all time in terms of like theme and message and things. And that would, of course, be Circle of Iron. Uh, but uh, other than that, mm-hmm. it, uh, th- this is just a fun uh, martial art movie, in my opinion. Well, my man, we are on our way to the road to Circle of Iron. That's not our next episode, but it is our second next episode. Next episode, folks, is Bounty Tracker. That's coming oh, yeah. out April 12th. I, love it. Love it. I have no idea what it is. I'm looking forward oh, to watching it. it. Oh, it's got great fight scenes choreographed by, in my opinion, the best martial art choreographer American-wise, maybe ever, in, in my opinion, in it's the same choreographer, uh, uh, Jeff Pruitt, that did Martial Outlaw. So it's okay. the same fight choreographer. Take that for what you will. I think I as a martial artist, Jeff Wincott is a, a talented guy. But most people might not know this, but Lorenzo Lamas was a, a fairly talented martial artist in his own right as well. And you will get oh, to see sorry. that on full display in Bounty Tracker. And our buddy Matthias Hughes comes along as, as the villain in Bounty Tracker. I really like this this movie as well i own the poster it's the first poster i had lorenzo lama signed uh, when i met him like 20 some years ago now what? Uh, he, he, yeah he was really cool uh, meeting him in real life he, you think kind of somebody like that who, who's you know a, a good looking guy and stuff and you mm-hmm. know super good looking you know 20 30 years ago uh you know but no he was super cool he wasn't a dick at all he was he was awesome he would talk about well he, he's a licensed uh, helicopter pilot and he would talk about stuff like well me and oliver grunner both fly choppers and stuff like that and stuff and so 
we, we had, we hit it off because of that stuff. We both bought choppers and, uh, you know, you talked about all these things. He was really cool. And, and you know, you, you kind of expect somebody like that to be kind of like an arrogant douche or whatever, but I thought he was awesome. As someone from San Francisco, you have to, you have to give praise. It's mandatory. You have to give praise to Will Clark from the San Francisco Giants. You have to give praise to Joe Montana because he was from the San Francisco 49ers. And you have to give praise to Lorenzo Lamas because he was part of Falcon Crest. It's, it's, Falcon just, Crest, yeah. it's just a rule, folks. I don't make these things up, but it's, it's just a fact. And, and I think part of the reason, too, we might have hit it off is, you know, I've been a motorcycle guy my whole life. Uh, obviously Lorenzo's into that. It kind of got written into his renegade character as well, but uh, you know, that kind of vibe motorcycle people generally are pretty cool with each other. I think he sensed that for me right off the bat kind of thing. So maybe that, that helped, uh, you know, but I thought it was really cool. Uh, Bounty tracker, like it's him, it's Matthias. It's choreographed by uh, Jeff Pruitt. It is also directed by Kurt Anderson that did martial outlaw. So uh, I think you're in for a good time with this one. I'm looking forward to that and I'm better be able to find it on YouTube. Otherwise I need to search diligently. My guy, we have talked about this movie up and down, left to right, back and forth. Is there anything you want to promote right now, including Pact of Vengeance and your Patreon? Pact of Vengeance is, is coming out really, 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 really soon. So it's going to debut on my Patreon, much like all my newer films have done for the last several years now, since I think probably Blood Prism uh, debuted on Patreon since then, Challenge of Five Gauntlets with me and Leo Fong, all that stuff debuts. It will be no different. Uh, Pact of Vengeance will debut first on my Patreon campaign. Uh, from there, people are like, when, when's it on Amazon? When's it on this? I don't know because I don't know when a distributor, it's not signed anywhere yet. I haven't even tried uh, to get distribution for it outside of what I do yet. I'm sure that'll happen, but uh, it could come out a year from now or whatever from a distributor kind of, kind of thing. If you want to see the film in like <laughs> any week now, uh, go to my Patreon at patreon.com slash killer wolf films. There's plenty of behind the scenes pictures and things like that. Videos, pictures, all that kind of stuff. raw footage stuff. I'll put up there. That's not polished yet, but you kind of see how the film is going kind of thing. All that stuff's available on my Patreon at patreon.com slash killer wolf films. I'm a subscriber to the Patreon page. Does Pact of Vengeance cost any extra money than the bare minimum no. subscription? No. No. Nope. There you go, it's folks. $2, $2 to sign up. I mean, you know, generally, I take people on there. You know, if you're in a good spot in life and you want to do a $5 campaign, I do a $5 level uh, uh, kind of thing. But uh, generally, it's all $2. $2 level has access to all the movies and everything else kind of thing. The $5 level is just a, hey, if you got it and want to support it, uh, it it's their kind of thing. Thank you very much. But uh, <laughs> kind of thing. Two dollars, folks, for o over the cost of a year, it's still probably less than you spend on a cup of coffee at Starbucks. Get that, yeah. get all of Len Kapazinski's catalog, get all of his podcasts. We're talking about a hundred hours minimum yeah, least, of entertainment yeah. for you, of content. As far as me, we already talked, we, we've talked multiple times about I Come in Peace, but check out our conversation about. Dolph Lundgren's The Punisher on Cushion Kai. It's, I think it's episode number six. You'll you'll have to just Google that shit and take my word for it, but it's a fun conversation. You'll love that. Otherwise, Waffle Box Podcast is the best part of Wednesdays. Microdose comes out every Friday. Len, you got anything else you want to say? I do not. I just thank everybody for watching. You should check these out. Some of them will be hard to find. I know Bounty Tracker, however, should not be is I believe that is available. Uh, it, they riff tracks that as well. So, uh, but I, I would suggest if you find it, don't watch the riff tracks first. I think riff tracks is funny too, but I appreciate the film for what it is first. Uh, I do not know if it's on Tubi or not, but I know it's available. It's it's not as hard to find as uh, No Retreat, No Surrender 2 is. So uh, uh, check out these films. It's this, this These are all the films that are my favorite American type martial art movies is what we're talking about this season. So check them out. There you go. For Master Len Kabazinski, I've been Kush Hayes. You've been you.
from the Bosnet family. The biggest thing he's done was Luke Besson's King of the Kickboxers with Jason Statham. 